Hello and welcome. My name is Rohit Vashisht and I'm a Senior Attic Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. In this video, we'll look at SQL Notebooks and Query Data version 2 for Amazon Redshift. Using SQL Notebooks and Query Data version 2, you can analyze or visualize results and collaborate your work by sharing notebooks with your team. You can create multiple revisions of the notebook and also export and import these notebooks. You will be able to visualize using charts, export them as JPEGs or PNGs. You will be able to duplicate your notebooks, save versions of your notebooks and be able to view those versions in Notebooks Explorer and either revert or create new notebooks out of those saved versions. You will also be able to export these SQL notebooks as Jupyter notebooks and import them if you wish to. A lot is promised. Let's get started with the demo. Log in to AWS Management Console. Go to Amazon Redshift. Click on your cluster and then navigate to Query Data version 2 on top right under Query Data button. Amazon Redshift Query Data v2 provides a free serverless web interface that you can use to explore, analyze, and share data using SQL. Let's start with the notebook. Assume I'm a data analyst working on a ticket.db, a hypothetical ticketing database where users register as buyers and sellers and buy sells tickets for various events like concerts, football games, plays, etc. As an analyst, I'm trying to find out what are the top selling events for different months of the year. The sample query joins sales and event tables to get the sale month, event name, and the sum of quantities sold. I'll order price some of the quantity descending and select the top 10 records. Now let's visualize this data using chart toggle switch. We can change the type of chart as per the need. For this result set, a bar chart would make more sense. We'll have the year month on X axis and quantity sold on Y axis. We will change the title of our visualization to top selling events. We'll increase the font size and change font color of the title to make it more impactful. The structure of our visualization is made of traces. For this chart, there are values in bar chart blocks that we can unblock as an insight. We will go to style, traces, rename trace zero to tickets sold, change the color of the bars, and add a border width to the bar values. In this section, we will choose to populate the event name data to be displayed in our bars of the chart. Pick the size and alignment for the text. We will have a nice looking bar chart with event names. In order to rename my x axis and y axis, I can either do this directly on the chart or I can go to style axis and modify the title. Let's call them year month and number of tickets sold respectively. Now go to style legend. Click on show legend to have trace name displayed. Then I'll go to general settings to change the color plot background and margins. Chart is ready. Let's export this as a PNG image for sharing it with others. We may also want to change the color of traces text borders so that even name appears isolated. Now that we have created one SQL cell of this notebook, it's time to save this version of my notebook and carry on with another cell. I'll add another SQL which gets me the best selling category, which is a snowflake dimension from event. For this, we will add another SQL cell. I'll close the chart for now as I've already exported it. To get category, we introduce another join in my previous query and select the category name. For better indentation, I'll insert a markdown cell between the two SQLs and label it. From data, it's pretty clear that the best selling category is pop. So probably a scatter line graph will make a good choice. The drill remains the same. We create the visualization with year, month and category on X axis, tickets sold on the Y axis and so on. Now, so far we have been executing our results using SQL cells run button. If we have a well sequenced notebook that we want to run in one shot, we can use a run all button on top of the notebook. We now have a notebook with two SQL cells and one markdown cell. Let's save this revision of the notebook and go check the version history out. Navigate to notebook section on left pane and right click on your saved notebook. For each notebook, you will be able to see the older revisions of it. Please note 
that explicitly saving a notebook only will create a new revision history record. No revision history record is created on autosave. You will see that each notebook version contains date and time of creation, the number of cells in the revision. Our first version had only one SQL cell versus the second version which had three cells, two SQLs and one markdown. If you want to create a new notebook from a version, you can certainly do so. Please note that when you create a notebook from a saved version, the name of the original notebook is retained. And if you go ahead and save it, another notebook with same name would be created. You would have to check the version history to find yours. Now deleting a version history does not mean deleting a notebook. Version history is made up of every time you clicked on save revision for your notebook. You can delete a notebook by right clicking and delete. So what do we do if we want to reuse a notebook? The answer is duplicate button right under the save revision. This will create a copy that you can rename and this is how you can reuse your templates. Now let's go take a look at the duplicate that we just created. Here is the original one and then here is the duplicate notebook that we just created. And since this was created by autosave, it will not have version history as of now. Version history is comprised of manual save version action. Let's save the duplicate notebook and then check it again. As expected, version history has the save version action recorded. I'll go ahead and delete the duplicate notebook to keep one true copy for this demo. Now let's try to share this notebook with your team. Right click, share with my team and that's it. Shared notebook will appear in shared to my team and shared by me sections. But just in case, if you get an error for missing principal tag SQL workbench team, you would need to create a tag for the team role or user. You just have to go to IAM, then go to role or user that's intended to use this notebook. And for that user or role, add a tag with key as SQL workbench team and the value as role or user who is accessing the notebook. And that's it. This should take care of it. Next important concept is export and import. In order to export a notebook, Go to the export button right above save version, click export. This will save your SQL notebook as a Jupyter notebook. In order to import, you go to notebooks, click on import button, select the notebook to import and bring it to life in query editor version 2. Now let's look at the importance of markdown cells more closely. Imagine I am authoring a nice pretty notebook that I will be socializing. This will have a header followed by a stepwise SQL execution. This will create a temp table in the first SQL and in the next one, read that temp table and so on in a sequential manner. Notice the default SQL cell before header. Let's get rid of that. We have just created a template notebook that we may want to save for later, be able to run all of it by using run all button and be able to share it with my team. Such templates are ideal candidates to reuse. And as I mentioned before, you can choose to create a new notebook from an older version, remember to rename, or you can choose to duplicate such notebook templates. Alternatively, if you want to reuse a notebook that your team member created and shared, you can go to notebooks, share to my team section, right click, duplicate, customize it, and make it your own. Once duplicated, it will be available to use under my notebook section. Take it forward as you like. That is all for now, folks. Uh, we'll keep bringing more content and query data version two features. Until then, thank you so much for watching.